Welcome back to the BDG Fantasy Football YouTube channel. In today's video, we will be going through the top 40 wide receiver rankings for week five of fantasy football. Five weeks upon us. We did the running back version of this video earlier today, so go check that out on the channel. We will link it down below. And as always, if you want all of our rankings at any given point in time, you can go become a Big Dog member at bdge.co or by depositing on Underdog Fantasy the Underdog Fantasy app with code BDGE. Depositing $10 or more, you'll get access to it for the entire year for free just by doing that. So about the top 12, we can probably uh, run through these relatively quickly because we don't have any big differences here. Nico at one, CD at two, Jamar at three, Malik at four, Jay Jeffs at five, DK at six, MHJ at seven, Chris Godwin stain at eight, Jaden Reed at 9. Shout out to the respect on that one. Drake London at 10. Debo at 11. Chris Olave at 12. And now we get into tier number two. The yeah. wide receiver twos here. Amari Cooper up at 13. Diggs at 14. Evans at 15. Garrett Wilson at 16. DJ Moore at 17. So we've got some um, big discrepancies here once we get into the top. You know, I love we, we, we settled in even on Garrett Wilson, pushing him down to 15. He's, he's That's just crazy. chilling there. Yeah. That's crazy. At, uh, at 16, but we have Amari Cooper, Adam, you've got him down at 16. You've normally been higher on him and Andrew, you've got him up at 11. So you have him as a wide receiver one. Obviously the matchup is cake mm -hmm. here against uh, Washington. Sure. Why have you started moving him further down? Cause I, as a Browns fan have watched the team every single week and just yeah. naturally it's, it's a, uh, re realistically matchup can't be much better. And Amari Cooper still is getting a lot of targets. It actually can't be better. Like <clears throat> this is the worst. No, the for worst. sure. Yeah. I, all that being said, if there's a team that's going to find a way, it's definitely the Browns. Like, th this offense is yeah. horrible to watch. If that touchdown and isn't called back last week, do you still feel the same way? Yes. Yeah. Honestly, yes. Really? I do. Because, can I tell you the truth? There's nothing about this offense that, there's a play here and there, sure. But, like, they still found a way to score only 16 points. Like, yeah. the offense is, it just feels very broken. It it's feels like the offense broken. is not going to get enough time to Watson Every single time the he's back line there. is so bad. The one thing about the Browns the last two years, while they've been better, and three years, whatever you want to say, since they've been like a more competent football team, is that offensive line has been really good across the board. When they're healthy, Th yeah. This offensive line at the moment is absolutely woated. Yeah. It's so bad. They're probably going to be without their tackles again. And, then, and, then and that, their center just got hurt too. Correct. And when you have – like, so Batonio is actually a really good guard. They put him on at left tackle. It is – so hard to watch. He he's just not a left tackle. Looks like a fish out of water. Over Watson there. looks bad, and then he's also under pressure within about a second and a half of every single snap. So it's 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 tough. And Cooper's getting a lot of targets, but he just he's not separating at all. So the reason I have him here is like obviously I'm I'm not telling you not to play Mark Cooper. I'm just saying right now my level of confidence that it's not another great middling week is I'm I'm a little skeptical. As I guess it's a lot of feelings. All right, it's a it's a it's a broken Browns fan. Right, feel here. that. Let's move to Diggs. We got a little revenge game here. You don't think Diggs is going to command a bunch of fucking targets here? That's exactly why I have him at eleven. This yeah. is like this is a guy that's going to be begging for the football. I'm going to get it. Yeah. Um, is Tank Dell out. Do we have an injury update on Tank Dell? No update yet. No update, but it started. I think it's. I think he's going to play. Oh, I was. I thought it sounded more like he might not play. Okay, so my reasoning for saying I think he's going to play, and maybe it's not the best reasoning ever, is. Sleeper went from like eight projections to eleven projections. Like it's trending up on Sleeper. Like I think he has a full like twelve point projection right now. It's a okay as of the most recent update. Tank Dell is expected to return and play against the Bills, barring any setbacks. So then, okay, if if he's playing, Pulling I think I still bit. have Diggs probably top twelve. But if he if Tank was to miss week five, this guy's a top ten receiver for me. If Tank Dell misses, yeah, yeah, I I kind of agree. I think like Diggs is probably in store for a better game than than a worse game here. Uh, I'm I'm intrigued to see how that game plays out. It, it's kind of hard to get a grasp on like what Houston is up to this point in the season. Uh, and Buffalo is obviously schlacking teams and then just got their ass whooped by Baltimore. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I don't know. Either you guys have a read on that game? Uh, no. I mean, I think the matchup technically Buffalo's been pretty tough. Like they've been sure. really, really good against wide receivers. That's really the main reason why I bumped him down a little bit. I'm definitely following the revenge narrative. Like it's probably the most fun narrative this weekend to probably follow also you have the dj Moore carolina uh revenge narrative as well this week so you get those two guys but i, I think for it me i didn't really feel like there was love lost though between Moore and carolina was there nah he had digs in he buffalo had some felt. things to say about carolina i think on his way out like yeah. definitely didn't speak highly about dj, them. DJ sure. Moore had cam right. and outside of that you had a lot of bad quarterback play <clears throat> honestly i hope it's not a I hope it's not like a bitter return. I feel DJ like more you're talking here. No, I'm talking Stefan Diggs. Oh, I hope yeah, it's well, not Buffalo, a bitter return because I, I loved, you know, the the combination of Josh Allen and Diggs. They felt like Diggs and Buffalo. Honestly, oh, I man. feel like a lot of Allen's uh, progression 
was in in part due to Diggs. It's, it, they were it's they helped like, each it, other. It, sure. Yeah. Unless you think that life is full of coincidences like that, there's no. Mm-hmm. It's a hundred percent. He he helped his like transformation humongously. Obviously I agree. Now, Buffalo should show love to Diggs for but sure. The reality is I though, think Diggs, Diggs should also show love to Buffalo too, though. Yeah, but that's sure. exactly the point. Is I, I think there's a chance that neither one is going to do so. D- Diggs is a very guy. It seems like when he leaves, he 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 had a way of just making it be polar I think, situation. I think there is a zero percent chance that you see any type of negative from Josh Allen. I think Josh Allen's no. going to show love a- 100%. He, Josh Allen's already kind of been – that's, like, been his M.O. He's talked about this a yeah, lot. Yeah, like, still loves Diggs. That's my brother. Like, And then Diggs has been out here <laughs> talking about, like, let's see if Josh Allen's still good without But, see, me. the thing is, the D- Diggs – He very, still is. Diggs very much the way he, he is. It's, it's been something that's kind of been a cloud over him. He's had a yeah. problem. He was not happy when, in Minnesota. They wouldn't give him enough targets. He left yeah. – the difference I, is DJ Moore – one, I don't think he's the opposite as far as, like, a person. Two, they don't – the Chicago offense doesn't have time to figure out about revenge games, bro. Facts, the, the, yeah. the Chicago <laughs> offense Facts. has to get their shit they together. Got, they got to worry about game games. Right. Yeah. yeah. Fucking, fucking I love, revenge I, games. I don't want to let – I love Stephon Diggs. He's, like, one of my favorite wide receivers ever. But uh, I just watched – he was on The Shop um, the other day, and he was talking about that Minnesota time, and he was talking about Adam Thielen, and he said, like, he forced his way out because he felt like he was the – secondary guy to Adam and he was but to be fair Adam Dillon was so fucking good so good and he said like it was nothing against Minnesota it was nothing against anybody there but like I had to bet on myself to become a number one yeah I I mean and also they were in a you know uh now as you know Stefanski led offense that was not throwing the ball a ton and yet they were splitting it between two different guys so it's hard to get the targets he he wanted when he came back to Minnesota the other week it was all love in Minnesota it was it was dope but yeah yeah, let's let's move on yeah so we got Mike Evans nine spot difference here uh I think Chris Godwin's obviously performing like the alpha week in and week out for the most part Evans had a big game last week that's the only reason I have like again Evans uh, this isn't supposed to be some kind of hate on Evans it's just the reason I have him lower is I think now it's pretty clear uh Godwin is the guy that regardless of how the script goes He's got a safe floor and a high ceiling, I think. Right now, what we see with Evans is, to me, the way I'm viewing it, very high ceiling still, not nearly the same safe floor. I That's feel fair. like the way this has shook out so far is kind of whoever scores the touchdowns is the guy who has the better week. <laughs> like, that's just kind of the way it's been in this Godwin's been good. Nah, Godwin's been good, though, regardless. Like, his floor has been really he solid. Out, he got outscored by Evans last week, and Evans was the one who was in the end zone. I'm not saying that he can't be outscored by Evans. Right. The, po- the point is, Evans has a high ceiling still. Godwin, though, even regardless, is going to have a high floor. I'm not disagreeing with the floor. I think okay. Godwin has the higher floor, and that's why I have him over sure. Evans. Well, it feels but like Godwin has a higher, like, fl- higher floor, and it's gotten to the point now where similar ceilings? similar uh, chances of scoring a touchdown. Where right. for a while, it was always like, Evans probably 2-1. to one. Like, Godwin was a guy who would score five touchdowns a year. Evans would score somewhere between like 9 and 13, yeah. where it's kind of evened out. Exactly. Fair. And if you look, I mean, well, last we'll week see. was the, last yeah. week was we'll the only see. game, last week so far, the only game Godwin has not scored a touchdown. And Godwin right now, eight targets, eight targets, nine targets, nine targets. Yeah. This, this guy is just going to have... At worst, like a wide receiver three finish, and he has the upside to get a wide receiver one. For sure. So. Yeah. Let's let's move on to some more polarizing conversations here. I think Terry Kill is one of them, right? Because Terry Kill, in that Miami offense, is struggling crazy now. He's had two bad games in a row. We're talking about this with Devon Achan on the running back version of this video. Mm-hmm. Bad games in a row as well. Is it? Are we just going to keep saying like it takes one touch to get these guys to the top floor? Because it makes sense with Achan. Because the running back ranking, like the running back ranking the, landscape, is worse. So like field, you're not the, starting the field versus HN is horrible. It's horrible. But right. when you go to Tyreek Hill and you're looking at guys underneath them, where you have legitimate PPR studs in Deontay and like George Pickens and Jordan Addison coming off last week, BTJ has been a great rookie. No, it starts to look, become a more you, serious conversation. It, no, you you bring up a good point. To me, I think I've already kind of like it's, it's very easy when you don't want to talk about something. It just ignore it. Yeah, I, I've thought about this. Quite a bit, unfortunately. I think right now I've made a very clear decision. This New England offense is, or offense, well, it's not good either. But the New England defense is trash, in my opinion. The whole team's not very good. I think right now. Gonzalez is nice. I mean, I'm just, to me, if he doesn't, if he has a scary week this week, okay? Hill? Yes. Going into the bye next week, now I'm coming out of the bye, like, unless two is playing, I'm definitely moving things a lot. I'm willing to see this week if he keeps this same thing up. I think that this week I could see it. It being better than it's been the last two. If he if he pay, if he, so. if he if he comes out and gives me another seven eight targets that end up with thirty yards and no touchdown, I think moving forward after the bye, I'm kind of shitting my pants with Tyreek Hill unless two is out there or a different quarterback situation. I just feel like for me, like last week, I think I had him around twenty, and that was too high based on what he did. Like I still think we have a similar situation this week. I have him at twenty one. That 
to me, like, I don't even feel comfortable saying he's in a top 20 right now. Well, that's what I mean. Like, I'm and looking at, like, it's Tyree Kill, sure, but some of the names below him, just in terms of consensus between you guys, Deontay Johnson has done nothing but be an absolute superstar since, the last two weeks. since Andy Dalton. Obviously, the matchup is really tough against Chicago, but... Yeah, I got Deontay higher than... I would go Tyree. Deontay, George Pickens. Like, Dallas's defense, they're not going to have Demarcus Lawrence. They're not going to have Micah Parsons. Deron Bland has been out. Like, sure, they have Diggs, but, like, Diggs is not a, like... This is not Patrick Sertain kind of thing. I like Pickens there. So I'm, I'm looking at these other guys, and I'm like, if we're looking at the reality of the situation, I think I like those guys more. Like, I might, I, I might be more comfortable, actually, like, looking at it, too. Here's here's what I'm doing with Tyreek, and it's, it's not going to sound great, but unfortunately, if I have Tyreek on my team, like, if I am deciding between Khalil Shakir and Tyreek Hill or George Pickens and Tyreek Hill, like, I'm going to be that stubborn asshole in my league that just is like, fuck it, I'm putting Tyreek in my lineup. I don't care. Sure. Like, I, that's just what I'm going to do. But that said, I see the argument where, like, if you want to go T. Higgins over Tyreek, like, that's probably the smarter decision this week. Yeah. I mean, the thing is to me, though, the last, like, it's hard to not be panicked as could possibly be. The last three, last three teams, though, Buffalo, Seattle, Tennessee, although early in the year, they've actually been, like, really good against receivers for scoring. Sure. So – I'm basically saying, listen, I, at this point, I'm not going to go to the panic level that probably is necessary. And if Tyreek Kill has a good week this week versus New England, I think, all right, that makes sense. Going into the bye, if he has another bad week, I'm, I'm scared shitless of Tyreek Kill until something changes at QB, period. Yeah. In the top 25 or out of the top 25? If at the end of the week when we look at it, what's he, the chance? He just said, oh, I got to scoring. Um, Tyreek Kill, top 25 in scoring. I would say, what, what would you say is that that many points? Like PPR was at 12 and a half, maybe? Let me, let me probably. Give you a, it's probably, uh, it depends. Honestly, the thing about it is it's tough is every it, single it week there's change. these random ass scores that make it. But it usually, it usually mobilizes. Like the top I'm, end of the spectrum, yes, but usually it mobilizes around. Yeah, I'm going to say. Okay, so last week, let me just give you last between week. Between 35 and 40% chance. He's last week, wide 25. receiver 24 was 12 and a half points. I fucking nailed it. Let's fucking go. Uh, I will say that Tyreek goes just over that. Okay, so, so what, you're saying it's like a 55% chance he's in the top 25. Yeah. I'll give him like five for 50, and I think he's <clears> maybe 60% chance he gets into the end you, zone. I guess you have him in the top 25. I was going to say, like, realistically on the percentage chances, it's probably like 30%, 40% chance, but I'm betting that he is going to okay. be inside the top 24. And, I, and I, I know this is technically the wrong way to look at it, but, like, I look at this week there's the percentage chances are what the percentage chances. But the last three weeks, I think there's he's going to have a good game one of the last three weeks. Which is where I'm leaning towards this week is it. Compound yeah, I mean, interest. they're trying. They're trying to get him involved. You know, it's not like it's for lack of trying. Just They just can't get a fucking I thing hope going on that He offense. catches like a 90-yard touchdown from Snoop Huntley because I'm starting Snoop this week. By the way, speaking, speaking of which, I mean, he very, like, is hard to overthrow Tyreek Hill. And he did get barely overthrown. He, if he catches that pass, are we having See, the same conversation? That's kind of the lack of, like, that's kind of the lack of, you know, not having chemistry with a receiver <laughs> where if you're a new quarterback and you got, I got Tyree kill on my team in your mind, if you haven't practiced deep shots to him, you just say, I'm going to unleash as far as I possibly can. You realize, okay, I, maybe I can overthrow there's, this guy. There's, but yeah, but if you look overall to your, I get your point for sure. It makes a lot of sense. It, there has been so few and far between times where people have actually overthrown Tyree kill on a run. But I'm, but I'm saying like, maybe, maybe in his mind, he's like, there's a, there's like a yardage marker where he knows to throw the ball. If he goes Tyree, Ki oh. Tyree is eight yards down the field i'm gonna throw it as far as i possibly can yeah, no i need to wait till he hits 16 yards down you know what i mean like they don't, there's, they don't there's a the, timing thing that's not they there, don't have clearly. the chemistry and the reps yet for I, sure I, exactly I'm that's my that's my concern throw this out there mike mcdaniel looks cooked like yeah i mean that that's he, the easy narrative you're not that guy right pal now, of course like, also, ain't that guy i definitely get in that is probably the easy fun thing to say okay let, let's be real. Who, who is fixing that situation? Right. Like, that's the. Well, that's my problem. We've seen this happen before. You. Like they look good with Mike White when he was there or whatever. Lafleur's throwing Malik Willis in here, and Malik Willis is going two and zero. Lafleur's like, a fucking and, certified and, killer. And, and there's no though, is, but there's also no reason to say. That I think Lafleur is a great head coach. But people were putting McDaniel in like this top five coach, offensive play <laughs> caller thing like that. You were well, you maybe. not? Were you not at the time? I think I was. Of course. Yeah. So you're like we're saying, just following the I'm narrative saying, here. Of course, like everyone could say that. It's easy. We've seen the expose. Sure. I also think that, and I said this about Malik, I said I picked him up in uh, your idiot league, mate, so you can put my money where my mouth is. Good coaches are going to find a way to change the system around the players they have. 
McDaniel right now doesn't seem to be – I don't know that there's a great situation to put any of these guys in. He stresses me out just looking at him on the sideline. Like, he looks like he's sweating his ass off. Like, have you seen, like, him on the sideline? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Bro. All right, let's keep moving <laughs> down the rankings here. Uh, Deontay at 20. George Pickens, 21. Zay Flowers, 22. JSN at 23. Tegan's at 24. Look, 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 I think we can keep going past this, and we, we can talk if you want, but there, none of these players with buys here now should even be in consideration for benching. Agreed, yeah. Let's move into the third tier, because these are the guys, like, when you're deciding between your flex spot, and it's like a running back in the 25 to 36 range and a wide receiver, I'm leaning Always towards the wide receiver, wide receiver almost every single the, time. In a, in a PPR league, I'm not even close. Yeah, I would say, honestly, at this point, even in a half PPR league, I'm there. Agreed. And if, unless you're in like a complete old school standard league, I don't think it's really much of a discussion. I, yeah. I would even go as far as to say, like, even like 37 to 42, I'm still probably throwing those guys in over. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Let, let's, yeah, let's keep moving down. We got Khalil Shakir at 25 coming off of a relatively good game, nope. but a consistent couple of weeks. Terry McLaurin ha- has had a little bit of a bounce back. Uh, I would say I want to see this Washington offense play against a good defense, but I don't know that Cleveland's a good defense right now. Not this version. Yeah. So they have 80 points in the last two games. What? Washington has 80 points yeah. scored in their last two yeah, games. They're playing against shitty defenses, but again, I don't know yeah. if this is a real test. We got Michael Pittman bounce back a little bit. Let's talk about the indie receivers. Uh, if <clears throat> Richardson is in, if Joe Flacco is in, it seems right now that everyone in the world is like, I want Joe Flacco to play for fantasy purposes. That was not how this season was supposed to go for Anthony Richardson. No. Anthony Richardson is dealing with a hip pointer, an oblique strain, an abdominal strain. There's a 50-50 chance he plays this week. We don't really know. Uh, Josh Downs had a really big game. He's all the way down there at 43 for us. Talk about Pittman and Josh Downs if either of those quarterbacks Josh play. Downs in particular is the one. Joshy. But he, he's the one. I mean, honestly, it's going to feel ridiculous, but he's going to move a lot for me based on those two quarterbacks. Joe Flacco is a guy that's perfect for Josh Downs. Yes. Anthony Richardson – Josh Downs in the slot is a guy that's going to need a good passing quarterback that's going to give him volume. Like, you look last year, a guy like Minshew or Flacco, great. Anthony Richardson is not going to be your quarterback that I want, ideally, for a guy like Josh Downs. So, to me, 47 right now is like, it's more so leaning that A. Rich might play. And if A. Rich plays, I might even move him down a little bit more. If yeah. Flacco's under center, Josh Downs, for me, is in that third tier between the 25s and 36. He, he's, right. Yeah, to me, yeah. Josh Downs right now, you tell me that Anthony Richardson's for sure out. It's Flacco starting. He starts getting in the conversation of Roma Dunze ish. He's over. I yeah, put him for over, me, he's over Jerry Judy, probably underneath Darnell Mooney. I put him right there where Christian Kirk and Xavier Worthy are. Dang. Okay. If A. Rich is playing, <clears throat> I'm pulling Pittman down my rankings. I have him at 29. I'd pull him down even further. Um, I would probably throw him, dude. I'd probably put him in that Jerry Judy range. Like the Jerry Judy Romo Dunze range. Yeah. What do it's you it's tough right now? What do you think about in, in this same type of range? Curious your thoughts on the Green Bay situation. We got Wicks and we got Romeo. I think it's a good comment. They're all plays for me. Every honestly. single one of them. Wicks, Dobbs, Jaden Reed. Jaden Reed's a clear alpha there right Tucker now. Tucker Craft's a play. Like they're Tucker all Craft's plays. a big play right now. Play I mean, you're playing the Rams. This is a great fucking defensive matchup. Yeah. And I mean, we saw Wicks score twice, thirteen fucking targets last week. All of them had eight or nine targets. It it with Watson out, it becomes they still have so many weapons, but it's still a very condensed offense in terms of who's getting them. Jordan Love throws a lot of pa- uh, valuable targets, a lot of downfield shots. I also think like Romeo Dobbs is probably getting left for dead because he was the one that didn't have a big game last week, but he's still going to be one of Jordan Love's favorite targets. Jesus, I think you could start I, any of those I, as I a wide receiver. Three with upside. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like genuinely ahead of him outside of maybe worthy you could argue like there's definitely good cases there too but yeah i'm with you romeo dobbs i think is a i'm happy to put all those in my especially lineup. once bye weeks are here now romeo dobbs is not someone that we should be sitting realistically unless you no. just are goaded squad yeah i agree i i think too he's kind of more the he's kind of always been jordan loves guy like it feels like he's been like the possession guy the ppr guy and, and he's also been even when watson's out there he's running he is playing a lot of snaps. Yeah, yeah it does. for him, like the Watson injury, I feel like it doesn't matter. For Wicks, that's obviously like the big step up here, and Wicks is like a big play waiting to happen. Yep. Very good route runner. Like he could step into a monster role here. So I would rank it Reed, Wicks, Dobbs, but I yep. do think I wouldn't conflate the separation between Wicks and Dobbs, at least for this week, too much just based on the box score last week. Guy who went from nothing to absolutely something, we both have at the bottom of the rankings, tied at 44 overall, Andrew. Rocky. Savior, Leggett. Leggett. Oh. Yeah. Xavier Leggett, XL, XL had 10 targets. 
He had 10 targets. Led, yeah, he led the uh, the guys behind Deontay Johnson. Had the big game. Much tougher matchup against Chicago. Much tougher. I'm really interested to see how Carolina holds up now playing against the Chicago defense. You know I think what, it's going to get sloppy quick. I, I think the at least the narrative you could spin for Leggett this week, like if you're thinking about possibly playing him in the flex, is you know Chicago has a really good corner in Jalen Johnson. He's most likely going to be shadowing Deontay their whole Johnson secondary the rest good, of the week. Though. They are good, yeah. but you can they make the argument holes. that at least Jalen will most likely yeah. focus on Deontay, and maybe Leggett will have some room. But uh, overall, you know, you don't really want to play receivers against Chicago. They've been pretty damn good. Uh, the only place I feel like in that Chicago defense right now that's even giving up some points is their D lines giving up some points to the running backs. Yeah. I guess a little bit. I don't. I don't really want to play any players against Chicago D. To be honest, I honestly Andy Dalton uh, might just be him though. I, I will say, and and I'm going to push back on that just a tiny bit because I think we've been really the narrative from our channel has been kind of overrating Chicago's defense a tiny bit. Like, really, I do. I think we keep talking about them as if they're like top five defense. Like, don't play players against Chicago. I don't necessarily feel like that's the case. Well, I, I think there's points <laughs> to be had against Chicago, I think depending I think, on the I think, matchup. I think the Definitely on their run defense. I think, their, pa- I think their, their coverage and their pass rush is much better than most teams in the NFL. Right. I, I think that, though, the thing to talk about is that, like, the, the teams they've played so far, Tennessee, I mean, really not that great of a right. pa- passing offense. Indianapolis, like, has been very – up and down, uh, for sure, with the average experience, and then the Rams don't have, didn't have Just Puka or Cooper Cup. So, like, I get it. I, I mean, it's hard to pull, to poke holes in Chicago's defense, but I guess to me that would be the cases where if we see um, they're not actually that elite, that would be the clear, obvious thing. They haven't played that many great offenses. Yet. Right. I'm, I'm not saying they're bad. I'm just saying I think we've Running talked backs, about them a sure. little too highly. I don't know if they're fair point, like fair point. that good. Fair play. <laughs> Uh, that, that said, <laughs> how confident are you in Leggett this this week? I'll flex him. I'll flex I, him. I will too. Yeah. I mean, the one thing to remember, and I'm deciding between actually in idiot league mates, I'm deciding between Lockett against the Giants and Leggett against Chicago. Ooh. And I got to make that decision in league mates. Lockett. I think that's where I'm going, dude. Th- I mean, it, it has been up Ooh. and down and back and forth between who's getting targets. I, I'm just playing consistently. The Seattle offense. This Seattle offense has been fun to watch, and it's hard to understate that. If it is a locket week, I'm not, I don't want to miss that. Like yeah. when it's when it's been a week for any of these weapons, maybe I drop one of them and just pick up uh, Trey Sermon. And let me give you a tiebreaker. <laughs> I mean, yeah, let me to give your you a ranking, tiebreaker. Probably. Do you know what we just what month did we just hit? We just left the Mr. September season. True. It's October. Mm. It's October. What does that mean? Yeah, what is Mr. that? Mr. Mr. September. Andy Dalton has been like his career. Is he Mr. Been, September. Yeah. Uh. Well, you guys probably don't know. I'm in the division. When he was in Cincinnati, it was like. Might have a great start to the year. And oh, I remember that. He'd always be, like, low-key, like, in the MVP conversation after have an unbelievable start. Mr. Haven't yeah. people yeah. been using that same term, Mr. September, about Joe Burrow, but saying, like, he's a slow starter in September? I mean, and then, it, I mean well, it would be the flip side. But, yeah, but it's because this Cincinnati, so they're ca- trying uh, to carry over the same cute thing. narrative. Yeah, yeah, yeah fair yeah, enough. For sure. Too but, bad Joe Burrow ain't Tyler Lockett. I and, mean, and what? <laughs> what am I saying? <laughs> Andy what? Dalton. <laughs> what? Fuck, forget what I'm saying. But I mean, Xavier Leggett though looked really good last week. I'm I'm curious about him. I'm. What I think it think makes about sense. About the horseback riding celebration. What? It was <laughs> yeah, pretty hard. Yeah. Pretty sweet. What? What about the Jacksonville wide receivers? Because BTJ and Christian Kirk. Christian Kirk ha- had the two bad games to start. Has had two really solid games the last two weeks. I try to tell people it's not as bad as you might think. I, kinda, I still am playing BTJ over Christian Kirk. Yeah, I lean I lean him over Christian Kirk, but I think I have him literally one spot. I think yeah, thirty I and thirty one. Five apart. I think I might throw both of those guys as like the twenty five, twenty six. I think they might be really? like the high end wide receivers for me at this point. Yeah. I mean Indy's <laughs> defense is bad. Indy's Indy's defense is banged up. Like Yeah, they're bad. I, I think uh, I like the matchup for both of them. I think they've both proven enough to me. The one thing, Evan Ingram could be back this week, yep. which that's, would that's which would hurt Kirk a little bit. And also, all of these big weeks have come with him off the field, so well, I want to see what happens. I know that it, the easy narrative, obviously, is like Christian Kirk and Evan Ingram's basically a slot tight end, and Christian Kirk obviously plays a ton of slot. But mm-hmm. well, I'm kind of curious to see for BTJ, a guy who was getting four targets in week one and week two, if Ingram's out there the whole time, if he still stays on this nine target – uh, game range. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I'm just genuinely curious to see how it would shape up. To me, though, the reason I don't have any one of them either that any that high. This offense is just not giving me the like 
set it and forget it. Awesome. No, that's vibes. That's fair. Yeah, they're a really broken offense right now. I'm they need they need I'm a streaming. change. They need change in a bad way. I'm gonna man. stream T Law this week in one of my oh, leagues, and it feels no. scary. Yikes. That is that is bad. also. I'm gonna disclose this to you guys. I brought up that uh, horseback riding celebration. I hit that in my living room after he uh, <laughs> did it. Like I did. I it would with too him. if I started him. Yeah. I did it with him. I think I almost tore my ACL. <laughs> my knee was hurting so bad. The so like Rashi, the Rashi Rice. You think you tore we, your ACL, we, but now we still don't know. We need to get you an MRI. We don't bro. have an MRI yet, but mm-hmm. it was in pain, brother. That's funny. <laughs> uh, anyone else we want to kind of hit on here? What about the goat, Jawan? Jo- okay, yeah. Let's and let's, wanna, let's talk, talk about Jawan. I, I had a feeling you might want to talk about him. You you knew me all too well. Okay, so Jawan Jennings comes off the big week, and I'm like, cool. I got like a high end wide receiver too. Debo's active. George Kittle's active. <laughs> Juwan Jennings still leads the team in receiving yards, and he's looking good. Fair. He's looking very, Hard. very good. He did catch even, like a 50-yard so bomb. So he caught a 30-yard bomb, a 50-yard bomb, so because though, Brock Purdy is starting to trust him more than Ayuk downfield. And even yeah. though— That's clear to me. Even though, obviously, hindsight 2020, you would rather— you'd play Addison over Juwan. Like, yeah. for— That not, hurt. That hurt. Of Addison course. But not, know, but not knowing what was going to come, like, if you just told me, forget Addison for a second— what you knew about Juwan the week prior and then seeing how they use him this week. Like, you can't tell me that was the wrong process play. He, he obviously looks like a guy right now that is yeah. in this type of an offense. It's so trusted. hard to predict he's how players are going to perform off of multi-week injuries. There was just no – because all right, because Addison coming into the year, I played him week one, and I was like, he's coming off of the multi-week stretch during the summer and then immediately gets hurt. And I'm like, this yeah. shit's going to happen again if I put him into my lineup. And then he just goes bonkers, obviously. If it makes you feel better. It won't. It sure. absolutely won't. I'm the Vikings guy. I got Addison in multiple leagues. I didn't start him anywhere. I sat him in every league. Yeah. I wish I would have played him because, you know, I should have read into the narrative. The narrative is that Jordan Addison is partial owner of the Green Bay Packers at this point. So mm. I should have just known. The hindsight 2020, it's, it's so easy to sit here and say, oh, you should have played Addison. Yeah. It Go- was a very different conversation. Okay, so going forward uh, – I feel, like, I feel like for Juwan, the reason I was going to say that is like, dude, if you had concerns, I, I get if you had concerns with people coming back in the lineup. Dude, Jennings might have muddled this entire situation up to where you feel so- confident about Jennings, but now, like, how confident are you feeling everyone else? Too? So I don't feel confident about Jennings. Like, I, I don't think I could start him going forward. One of the other tricky things with Ju- uh, Juwan Jennings in particular and why I maybe should have thought more about Addison is – San Fran going against New England. Like, that matchup, they were 10.5-point favorites. So, it's easy to buy into the narrative, like, oh, they're going to get up big and not have to throw the ball. But, like, when that ha- when San Fran goes into games like that, when they're that big of favorites, they do that. You know, most of the times it doesn't actually happen. Like, teams are like, ah, they're not going to throw the ball. When San Fran is supposed to dominate an opponent, they end up doing that he all also, the time. I mean, I, I know Running the ball to Jordan Mason, etc. That's why Jordan Mason is my number one running back this week. That's crazy. I mean, Why C-Mac against Arizona just, literally no, goes for like 200 a pop and three touchdowns. No, I mean, they play. I, I just feel, I get that you're I'm saying. I'm playing against fucking Tony who has Debo. And Juwan Jordan Jennings Mason, getting six targets again this week, a lot downfield. I, he's, I mean, he's obviously not an auto star. He's fine. Like, he's, he's, he's a flex. A, he's a guy for me at this point. I'm putting him flexed. I'm, I'll, I'll say I'm probably sitting him this week. What, who who are the players you're playing ahead? I have Pickens, Higgins, Addison. Okay. Those are all pretty easy for me. Uh, actually, no, because AJ Brown's on a buy, so I think I'll have to put J- Juwan in my flex. And, that, and that, that's my point, and the reason I have him here is, like, say whatever you want about it. You don't have to feel like the greatest. Dude, I feel like most people are going to have to play Juwan Jennings. If you have a three-receiver league, like most leagues are, you, how are you sitting Juwan Jennings and not a flex yeah. at minimum? Yeah, that's that's fair. The yeah. matchup's really good. I think he's, like, clearly – he's running a decent amount of routes. Like, he's up to 70% of the routes even last week when the guys were back at full strength. So, like, if they're going to use him in that capacity – Dude, you, you know, tell me all those guys are on the field. He still got six targets last week. I keep yeah. telling I, myself – I'm in. I keep telling myself the IUC week is coming. Is it not coming? Yeah, we've been telling you it's not. I don't know, dude. Honestly, to me, the thing about IUC has always been, while people may not know this or like this, he has been – a technician and a great like route runner. He when yeah. he gets open, he breaks his routes off and he is spanking open. He he does not look anywhere near the same as far as his route running, as far as like the chemistry. I don't know how much is it has that, to do with the offseason, but it just doesn't feel the same for him right now. Yeah, I was now. gonna say, is that the uh I didn't do anything this offseason, I just sat at home? Dude, or also, is it the I just got paid syndrome and now I don't gotta do shit? I don't think it's those I don't think it's uh, it could I can't tell you for sure. I just feel like he in his holdout this offseason, was a lot more vocal, a lot more upset, and I would go to the ladder. I which just is, got paid. I, what else? I would just go to, like, he's not, he, he wasn't expecting to be playing. He was expecting to hold out. I think there's a couple things that could go differently here. I think, like, one thing to keep in mind is last year, again, Ayuk had a breakout year, but he, he 
did it on 105 targets. Hyper efficient. Volume was really low, so like yeah. there was always going to be a little bit of regression there. The Juwan Jennings emergence right now, it's not too dissimilar from like if you're an owner of Brandon Ayuk, you're nervous that downfield shots now start to go to Juwan. Brees Hall owners are nervous that goal line carries might start going to Braylon Allen. Like it's it doesn't make the other person super valuable, but it it ruins a lot of what became because you're if you're only getting 105 targets. Those have to be really fucking valuable yeah, targets. But you're not like benching Ayuk in any way. No, right? definitely not versus Arizona. Of course not. Um, that matchup's really good. Well, I'm I, saying like moving forward because I I think people are like nah. sick of what Ayuk has been doing. Well, and with, like with Ayuk and this whole San Fran offense, you have to do what you have to do in in the terms that like you keep them in your lineup because you know what they offer on a week to week basis. You highs, take the goods with because when you start to try to guess which ones are going to be good, it's the same thing with the George Kittle experiment. He's going to end up being the tight end three on the year. He's going to get you points where he has the, three point the, games the, and the, then twenty five points. You know games. what though? T- similar to the point you made about Achan is like okay. Kittle to me is a total mistake to even consider sitting because relative to the field, that the whole field in tight end is just trash. Right. The receiver field is great. It's the one Fair. plentiful field. And here's the thing about Ayuk. This matchup's way too good for me to not even consider him a top twenty option. That said, if he versus Arizona has another one of these like five target games, fifty yards or less, for the first four weeks, five targets, five targets, five targets, and then he hasn't week hit five, 10 PPR points. He, yet. He, he's had one game where he really commanded a lot of targets. That was last week Ten when, of them, right? when wow. Debo when Debo was out, right? Yeah, yeah. Dude, I mean the one thing is Ayuk, while 105 is not the same high target volume of, like, the elite, elite receivers, the pace that he'd be on is, like, not good pace even for targets, yeah. let alone it's not efficient right now. Yeah, so, I mean, at this point, you're, like, scrape, you're hoping that he puts up a game that, like, Kirk has, Christian Kirk has put up the last two weeks. If you see, like, a 7 for 75 and a touchdown, you're like, fuck yeah, Ayuk. You know, it's like this you're is, not getting anywhere near that right now. And I know it's – it's it, right now, like, very similarly, I said about Tyreek Hill, this is the week I'm like, all right, Tyreek can give us a week and I'm not panic going past the bye. If I eat with this great matchup again, four great matchups in a row, doesn't four do great matchups shit. in a row. We're talking about five weeks into the fantasy Bro, season. I'm, it's, I'm, we're deep. We're I, am, deep. Yeah. I am starting to jump off the Ayuk. Uh, I'm starting to jump panic on it. What is it? He's going to be my 13th reason. Is that what it is? <laughs> yeah, Damn. Ayuk is my 13th reason. Let's Damn. let's talk about the Kansas City receiving group a little bit right now because Rashi Rice is going to be out for the foreseeable future. Obviously, Travis Kelsey gets <sighs> I a don't big know. bump. Xavier Worthy is the hardest to rank right now because I, I personally am not of the mindset that it's all of a sudden going to mean he's going to get a ton more targets. No, I don't. I actually also, don't really think his role changes that tough much. Tough matchup this week against the Saints, too. True. Like, it's not well, a great Well, let's matchup. talk about outside of Worthy. Okay. Is there anyone? Because you have Juju, who was okay for them a couple of years ago. You have Justin Watson, who will run 80% of the routes. No. The problem with, like, nobody trying to put one for one for Rashi, Rashi wasn't just, like, right time, right place. Rashi was playing so well. Like, when you watch him, he looked explosive. He was separating at the line of scrimmage. Like, he looked great. Everything about him looked good, plus the targets were coming at insane clips. Yeah. I, I think the reality say he is, He was, like, like, earning the fuck out of those targets. It wasn't facts. just right place, The right only time. person that I think this even benefits is Travis Kelsey. I kind like, of agree. Yeah. Kelsey no, is... Th- this think, is what you needed to see for Travis but, Kelsey to have relevance this but, year. But I guess on that point, in the same uh, way that we just talked about San Fran... Is the, is there a world where this is like uh, you take the highs with the lows with this receiving group where it's like you just continue to pe- uh, put Xavier Worthy in your flex spot and hope that he pops off like he did you, last week? You Do play you, Worthy in the flex. You don't play anybody else though. Okay. Yeah, I was no interest say, in there's, no none of them. If you, I think you're getting cute if you think you're going to try to pinpoint anyone else as someone that's going to be consistent target earner and. Well, that's worth what I'm saying. Playing. Not consistent, like in, in the same way San Fran is like yeah, up and down. No, no, I'm not I, doing that. With I'm saying anybody. anyone else on this team. I'm not. No. Absolutely not. With Worthy, like... I'll play Worthy, Kelsey, and Hunt, and that's it. Like, I don't want to yeah. play anybody else out of it. Okay. I think you guys are way too low on Wondell Robinson. You wanted to talk about him. We're talking about a 14-target game. This dude is... I do. This dude's, what, like a top 15 PPR fantasy wide receiver right now? He is fifth. Fact check me on this, because I know you have the stats up right now, right? No, nah, I was checking oh. if Malik Neighbors, if we have an update on He's his concussion. He's fifth in the NFL in targets right now, I think, in general. Like... A top five target wide receiver in the NFL. Mm-hmm. Um, look, he's he's the PPR. What would Hayden Hayden Weeks call it? The PPR scam of the year. PPR scam, yeah. Yeah, that is Wandell Robinson. He's he's just not doing a lot with these targets, but he's getting a ton of them. I think he's a guy that I'm very comfortable just playing in as a flex each and every week. Even this week's matchup against Seattle, which should be a little bit tougher. Uh, but that said. I mean, I, I think I am maybe too low on Wandell. Like, I, I, Are would, you I would probably play him over Keenan Allen. I would probably play him over. I would play him over Xavier Worthy. I would I would play him all the way up there. Are, are we, though? PPR? Yeah. I'm not going to go that are far. We though, like, well, this is half. This is half. It's okay. Half. And, then, and then the other thing is, it's I feel like I have him right where I'm supposed to because, dude, you're telling me, all right, he's had two games of 14 and 12 targets. 
where he's finished as a wide receiver three and wide receiver four in half in PPR. In half PPR, sure. I guess I'm leaning more towards PPR. And even then, it's a wide receiver three and almost a wide receiver four. He was wide receiver 35. Right now, his finishes in full PPR. Wide receiver 35, wide receiver 30, wide receiver 40, wide receiver 27. Yeah, I think the only Give one I'd the, swap more is Keenan Allen. What are the points? <laughs> this is full PPR? This is full PPR, yeah. yeah. So 12, 9.8, 13. Last week, he had 18. It's, it's, a mm. nice, it's a nice floor for someone down there. Oh, right, but I guess what I'm saying is like, if you're telling me wide receiver 27 is, is the best. I, it's the best he's finished so far, and that's with, what, zero touchdowns? Correct. And yeah, I just said it in 41. He, no, he actually had a, he had a touchdown in week two. Okay. So, like, I, my, my thing is, though, yes, he is a guy that if, like, I didn't have another option or I'm not having a debate, like, I know a fine play. I'm not acting like I won't play him. He's definitely a flex option. Yeah. I just personally, while he does have that nice little floor, I don't see a ton of ceiling with him. No, you're right, because I was talking about this yesterday. Like, there isn't really much of a ceiling. He's not an explosive player. He catches a million fucking balls, and that's really it. He, Josh Downs feels like the better, more explosive version of Wondell Robinson in the right situation, which sure. I don't know if he's going to get those targets. but And I would put Josh Downs ahead of Wondell Robinson if I knew it was Joe Flacco at the helm. Yeah, what, what, what do you have to say? Adam what? Schefter Adam Schefter tweeted that the Saints are trying to go in and get Dar- uh, Devontae Adams right now. Dude, so there's been a, I've actually seen a lot of hidden Carr. teams. So like, oh, okay, yeah. yeah. I mean, that, that, that didn't he try that already? He that's tried enough. that already. That narrative's enough. already pretty team. high. But uh, that Josh would, Jacobs' best season came in that year too. But when Josh that would Drake really went crazy. Twenty-two Jacobs, yeah. That would hurt the Rashid Shahid hive quite a bit, don't you? think? Would it though? I feel like Shahid's not a volume player. Adams, anyway. Alave, Shahid. I mean, yeah, you got a guy that's going to command fucking eight targets a game for sure. Adams, don't sure. go there. I've seen Adams tied to the Saints, him tied to the Lions, which I think is a pretty cool ad. Him tied to the Cowboys makes a lot of sense. The Alave owners would be really happy about that, wouldn't they? Sure. <laughs> How about Adams just doesn't go anywhere? That would be the best <sighs> so, for me. That's all right. Let's not. <laughs> He can, yeah. I'll let him go to Minnesota. He can Speaking of Minnesota. which, why don't we get to tri- why don't we get to deep cuts? He wants huh? to play for a contender, right? Go to Minnesota. Let's 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 get I, some deep cuts, I, I Andrew. Got, who do you have? I got a little deep cut. For who do you have that's gonna uh, flop for us? Mm. Oh, I got the goat pick. Actually, I got Jordan Whittington of All the right. Los Angeles Rams. Nah, that's a fire pick. Uh, look, this is gonna be a really good matchup. Last week, his snaps went up to like ninety seven percent of the snaps. Is that good? Oh, that's pretty damn good. They're using him in that Puka Nakua, Cooper Cup type of role. I think if if you're looking for somebody on the waiver wire in this matchup here this week that you think, hey, it's not going to cost me a lot of fab most likely. Like, he's sneaky under the radar. You can throw him in the flex. You can throw him in the lineup. And I think that there's a chance that he he just might break out this week. I, I think there's a, a good chance that he puts up a really good PPR game, too. I agree with that Hasn't call. he already kind of, like, at least a little bit broken out, though? Not, I'm not, I'm, I agree. I think it's a good call. This I was just, the first week that he played like real numbers, and yeah, you know, he had like six like, for sixty. He or was something. running. I mean, the, I feel all like last summer week was kind of like a little bit of a break. Yeah, yeah it for was sure. six for sixty, but like, but it wasn't like big enough that people really took notice of yeah. it. And they're still like, oh, this is just like late round dude in the summer. But the comparisons were all summer. He played amazing during the preseason, and people were like, oh, he's kind of like what Puka was doing last year. Now he's playing the Puka and Cooper Cup role, which is just a target fucking magnet. So uh, yeah, I, I I actually think you could flex and Jordan Whittington like a he no, he's a good sneaky. call. In my home league, he went for one dollar fab off the waiver wire. Mm. Well, Jack uh, picked him up like three weeks ago. I know he's been playing him in his lineup. So well, he's I mean, zeros, he's a like, Texas guy, isn't he? Yeah. He's yeah. been in his lineup before the six or sixty. <laughs> That's what I mean. Like he's been playing him for three weeks <laughs> yeah. straight. So sorry, he's got no, sorry. Weeks, he so. got like the three point weeks out of yeah. him. Um, to me, speaking of the whole Devonta Adams thing, whether he goes to the Saints or goes nowhere, here's the guy you should be playing. And uh, I'm going to do the Andrew thing. Shout out to CVCA High School. Shout out to my neck of the woods. Trey Tucker is a guy that you may or may not know about. You probably don't because Trey Tucker the last two weeks, though, has actually already been getting high percentage of snaps, 80-plus percent of snaps. He's finished as the wide receiver 8 and wide receiver 24, well under the radar for most people. Who are they playing this week? Las Vegas I think plays. it's Denver, isn't it? Uh, Denver, yeah. Denver. It's a, Denver. Yeah, it's a tougher matchup. Yeah, but this is a guy that got last two weeks nine targets, six targets. Yep. Um, Finding the end zone in both games, right? Too. He's one of those small guys, but you just see him. He's a football player. He yeah. is He is built well. He's explosive. I've debated picking him up and starting him over Jawan Jennings last week. He, he, to me, like has those traits where you just – you don't have to think that much about it, but when he gets the ball, he could take a lot of plays for a huge game. Mm-hmm. That so. actually would have been the better play, too, right? Probably. I think, he, Juan ended I up think with Tucker the, outscored Jennings last Juan week. Juan right? Jennings in full PPR was wide receiver 24 last week. Yeah, but I think, he got, he, I think he had about he had 12 a, around. No, he had he, he had uh, 15 because he had a end That's around. I'm saying. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, Tucker, Tucker had an end around carry. Wouldn't have mattered. Yeah. His only carry went for a touchdown last week. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> It wouldn't have mattered in that one? Literally the new Derrick Henry. Dub. Yeah, facts. 
Uh, my deep cut of the week was um, I don't even remember. It was someone really, really deep. It won't be. It, was, it won't be as good as either one of those. It two. was uh, it, no. It wasn't even Jalen Naylor. No, I'm just kidding, brother. I love me some Jalen. Uh, it was actually uh, Pop Pop no, Douglas. Yeah, that's Pop. a good call. I like Pop Douglas. Uh, he ca- he had a down week, but he had a good week the week before that. Uh, I'm looking at the Miami matchup. And Miami's pretty banged up on defense right now. They lost Jalen Phillips. They lost a couple other guys where I think they will perform a little bit better. Their line's getting a little bit healthier as well. So Jacoby will have a little bit more time. And I think when he has time, Pop ends up being the first guy that he looks at, you know, in those uh, uh, short intermediate routes. I think he'll have a six, seven target game. Pop's explosive and, and he could pop off for, you know, a nice like 15, 20 yard gain on any of those targets. So don't trust any outside wide receivers. I don't really trust their run game right now. Um, you Again, he's like wide receiver 60, 65, I think, in the ECR. So if you're in a deeper league, I think you could do worse than him. He's a good deep cut. And um, since Brissett is 100% the starter, as you hear out of out of there, it's it, you stay with the guys inside. It's not great. But Pop Douglas is a guy that you he, – he's got a, a probably one of the safer target floors. He's going to give you at least six, seven, maybe even eight targets a week. Yeah, except for last week. And that's when I told you he was a deep cut. So this week is this <laughs> Did week. Did you take pop last week? Yeah, that's why this That's why this week he's a great call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You go back to the well. <laughs> All right, well, that's going to wrap up the wide receiver rankings video for week five. As we said, we have the week five running back version already up on the channel. So go watch that if you need some help with sit start decisions. If you want all of our rankings, bdge.co, become a big dog member, download the Underdog Fantasy app and get it for the entire season for just 10 bucks by depositing on the app. With promo code BDGE, get automatic access email to y'all. We love you. We are out here, and we'll see you in week six. Time to put some waivers in.